My name is Pete Buttigieg, and I am running to be the next host of Jimmy Kimmel Live. Yeah! Now, this is a strange night for us, not only because this is my first time hosting a talk show, because we are doing it without a regular studio audience. Due to public health concerns over the coronavirus, we have canceled the studio audience tonight. But a few kind Kimmel staffers and some friends, my husband Chastin, all here instead. We're gonna have a great time. Everyone is spread apart at the CDC recommended distance. Uh, this was not our plan. We just decided this a few hours ago. And it's disappointing because, as you all know, I love to crowd surf. It's, <laughs> it's kind of my thing. <laughs> but the experts have told us the best way to prevent the spread of the virus is for us to physically stay apart. So that's what we're going to do. The only way we're going to get through this crisis is with unity. So let's do this together. Who's with me? <laughs> Full disclosure, none of those people are here. <laughs> but when you don't have a real audience, you have to fake one, just like Trump's inauguration. <laughs> now, last night, President Trump addressed the nation regarding the coronavirus pandemic, and he had this message for the American people. If we are vigilant and we can reduce the chance of infection, which we will, we will significantly impede the transmission of the virus the, the virus will not have a chance against us. Now, I agree that this virus is no match for the American people. But for us to get through this, we have to take immediate action. Now, there is a bill right now in Congress that would provide free coronavirus testing for everyone who needs it, paid emergency leave, and unemployment insurance for workers who are laid off because of the economic shock. So for the good of every worker, every family, every community that will be hurting, we need Congress to get that done. So take a moment, call the number on your screen, tell your senators and representatives now is the time for action. See, they're even on board. So thanks for your support, <laughs> Eric, Don Jr., whoever that was standing next to you. <laughs> and look, I know this is a time of great anxiety for our country, but believe me when I say that the resolve of our nation is strong. Our ideals run deep, and America will always be America. In fact, here's some living proof of that from last night's Masked Singer. <laughs> That's going to be me in three months, isn't it? <laughs> you know, a lot of folks are wondering how I ended up getting booked to host this show. And all I can say is that Iowa caucus app really screwed everything up. <laughs> Actually, Jimmy asked me to fill in because right now he is off taping Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which is a game show that Michael Bloomberg won 56,000 times in a row. You know, some people have been skeptical about me hosting a show like this. They're like, you're too inexperienced. You'll never be a good late night host. Well, a lot of people said I'd never get elected president, and I showed them. <laughs> well, I've been made to feel very welcome here today. And because I never show up to somebody's home empty handed, I brought some gifts for the crew. Truth is, I have a shipping container full of Pete for President merch that I can't get rid of. <laughs> so. That's right. Everybody here got some new threads today. But I'm guessing by your expressions that some of you may not have voted for me. <laughs> well, I also found somebody to take all of the leftover bumper stickers and buttons off my hands. Woo! Hi, everybody! <laughs> Guillermo, you look great. Thank you. I'll feel great, Mr. Pete. <laughs> Now, I spent most of the day teaching Guillermo how to pronounce my last name, and I think we finally got it. You want to give it a shot? Okay. All right, Mr. Pete Buracis. <laughs> you know, that's better than most people do. We'll go with it. All right. You know, I'm also glad that uh, Jimmy asked me to host tonight because, frankly, <laughs> I've got nothing else going on. 
As you know, I dropped out of the presidential race last week, which was unfortunate. But uh, what can I say? Some candidates know when it's time to get out of the race. And some candidates are Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> But really, running for president was an amazing experience. The support that our campaign got was unbelievable, and I really thought we had a shot. But turns out I was about 40 years too young and 38 years too gay. <laughs> but I do hope, at the very least, my presidential run has inspired some people. I mean, right now, somewhere out there in America, there could be a young kid thinking, one day, I too can run for president while dressed like the manager of a CarMax. <laughs> they, they, they write the jokes for me. Uh, <clears throat> yes, you can, kid. Yes, you can. <laughs> and although we didn't win, we, we did achieve some pretty big milestones. I'm, I'm the first gay person ever to win a presidential primary or car. <laughs> and the first gay man in 30 years to wear pleated pants. <laughs> we all have our journey. I am very excited about our guest tonight. We have music from Janae Iko featuring Miguel. From Veep, Tony Hale is here. And the one and only Sir Patrick Stewart is with us tonight. It's going to be great. You will get to see Captain Picard interviewed by me, a guy who looks like Spock's intern. <laughs> now, I have been a huge Star Trek fan my entire life, and I always thought Patrick Stewart was so cool because he's in charge of a fictional space fleet, just like Mike Pence. Uh, Tony Hale, you're... Hey, how are you? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're here early. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I felt bad, because I guess nobody wanted, wanted to come and watch your show, so I, I, I thought I'd be a seat filler. No, no, it's because it, it's, it's of the public, public health threat. We, we did this on purpose. OK, OK, OK. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> I got it. Oh. As I mentioned earlier, now that I'm out of the presidential race and no longer the mayor of South Bend, I'm actually unemployed right now. Now, this gig is nice, but I've only got it for another 52 minutes or so. Luckily, we're right here on Hollywood Boulevard and opportunity is everywhere. So earlier today, I took a walk around the neighborhood to see if I could scrounge up some work. Excuse me, are you hiring at all? Oh. Any positions? Hi. Hello, how are you, sir? Good. Hey, you guys hiring right now? Oh, no, sir. Sorry. Thank you. Hiring. All right. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, and welcome to Wetzel's. What can I get for you? Uh, actually, I was here to see about the uh, job opening. Oh, for that, you're going to have to speak to Debbie. OK, great. Uh, where would I find Debbie? Debbie! What? <laughs> so this guy wants to apply for a job. Hello? Let's make it quick. Thank you for meeting with me, Debbie. I'm very excited about this opportunity. What are your qualifications? Uh, well, uh, I've got degrees from Harvard and Oxford. Uh, I speak several languages, uh, served as a, a Navy intelligence officer, and I just won the Iowa caucuses last month. Mm-hmm. Well, can you name all five of our pretzel dips? Uh, your, your what? Our dipping sauces. Uh, uh, ranch. Ranch? I thought you went to Harvard. Okay, here's a hypothetical. Let's say you're handing out samples and someone asks for a second one. What do you say? Well, I, I would say that America was founded on an ideal. And, you know, freedom isn't free, but uh, a pretzel samples should be. And I believe that the time has come for us to build a new kind of politics, put aside our partisan fighting, and, and unite around a common goal. Pretzels for all who want them. The correct answer is no, and then you shove them. Got it. Have you ever twisted dough into knots? Uh, I, uh, I have not. 
Make me a pretzel. Okay. I'm sorry, but I don't think you're Wetzel material. Well, isn't there anything I can do? I need work. I have one idea. Samples. Oh, sir, it's like a sample? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Hmm. Doing your normal? Yeah, of course, yeah. Hmm. Have a nice day. Hmm. I told you to shove them. <laughs> I'm Pretzel Pete, and I approve this sketch. That was worth a shot. My thanks to Debbie. And one more thing. There is a Thursday night tradition here at the show. Every week, they bleep and blur moments from TV, whether they need it or not. So in honor of my guest hosting stint tonight, they put together a special Democratic primary edition of This Week in Unnecessary Censorship. Awkward moment you mentioned came after the debate when Senator Elizabeth Warren seemed to reject Senator Bernie Sanders' offer for a handshake. The time for small is over. My dad used to say, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck, Joey. It's about your dick. I respect where you're coming from, and I hope to earn your vote. But I'm not going to try to earn your vote by f***ing you. The Secretary Clinton, as you know, said that no one f***s you. What's your response to that? Well, on a good day, my wife f***s me, so let's, let's clear the air of that one. If you want to compare f***s, and frankly, I'm shocked that you do, uh, I am happy to do that. Well, let's get something straight here. I didn't f*** Pete. Pete's been me. I don't think you want a president who's f***able. So, <laughs> do, you, do you guys f*** each other? No. Here's what I believe. We should dream big, f*** hard, and win. Bernie <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Bernie <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Bernie <laughs> Trump. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.